I've been surprised by everything. Sure, I've, I, I've been almost fascinated. You know, I mean, it, it, I've watched virtually all of the debates and town halls, and this has been. I, I've always been a political junkie to some extent. Uh, you know, my dad was in Congress, and uh, but this is this takes the cake. <laughs> When we spoke with you back in September, you were the first person I remember suggesting at the time that you could wind up with a brokered convention. Um, looks a little less likely now because Donald Trump is doing fairly well. Yeah, it, tomorrow will be big on that. I mean, it, you know, tomorrow's proportional. Then they shift over to winner take all a little later. And, mm -hmm. and if the proportional, if, if the tally at the end of tomorrow is such that, that Trump has 40%, uh, of the delegates that have been picked, and they've been, the others have been assigned proportionally. You know, it could go to the convention. We'll find out. Um, in terms of Bernie Sanders, last time we spoke with you, you said that you admired Bernie Sanders. Since then, Charlie Munger has spoken up. He says, um, as an intellectual, he's a disgrace. You also called him a little nuts. Um, what do you see in Bernie Sanders' campaign, and what would you think of him as president? Well, what I like about Bernie Sanders is he is saying exactly what he believes. I mean, he is not tailoring his message week by week. It, it, you'll find with some of the candidates that they, they've shifted around, or they don't answer the questions. But with, with Bernie, you know exactly what he thinks. And I, in certain areas, I agree with him, and in certain areas, I would agree with Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> What, what areas are you talking about? If, if, if he's, he's, Bernie is bothered by certain things I'm bothered by, and I would hope other people are. I mean, things like the influence of money in politics. I mean, Bernie, Bernie would per, certainly put Citizens United at close to the top of the list. He would like to change, and he he's bothered he's bothered by uh, the fact that in a country with 56,000 of GDP per, per capita, that so many people are poor and many of whom are willing and able to work, but, but just are not getting by that well in this country. And he would like to do something about that. But it's what he would like to do about it, that, where I think Charlie's probably closer than I. Charlie's closer in saying it's a little nuts. Why? Well, I wouldn't, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't use that term myself. But I would, I would say that, that Bernie has a tendency to de demonize institutions and, and, and uh, he, he thinks the solution would be simpler, and he would he would turn the system, I think, somewhat upside down. And there's parts of it that I might agree with him on. I think, in terms of campaign finance, I think it should be turned upside down. But I don't think I, I think we have a marvelous system uh, in terms of delivering more and more of what people want. I mean, we have a golden goose that's laid progressively more golden eggs ever since the country was started. It's, it's the most remarkable economic achievement in, in the history of the world is what has happened in this country. So I, I do not believe in throwing out the, ba the baby with the bathwater. In your letter this year, you really took aim at some of the politicians who have been going around saying that things aren't, aren't going well in this country. Yeah. You, you said that, that, that things are strong here. Is that a shot at thinking we don't need to make America great again? Well, America America's never been greater. Uh, I, I mean, you, you can look at, you know, where we stand. I mean, it... It, it will be greater in the future, but America's never been greater. I mean, this, this is the best time to be alive in the history of the world. I mean, in terms of medicine, transportation, entertainment, you, you name it, or just in terms of aggregate wealth. Now, the distribution has gotten more and more skewed in recent years, and it should be skewed to quite a degree, but, but I would say the skewing has been excessive. But, but as I mentioned in the letter, I live in a... Middle, upper middle class neighborhood. I mean, the, the, the median income might be 100,000 a year or something like that. And every person in that neighborhood lives better than John D. Rockefeller Sr. lived at the time I was born. In one man's lifetime, an upper middle class neighborhood has evolved to a, a way of life that's better than the richest man then in what was the best country in the world uh, in 1930 was able to achieve. He had power and prestige and, and all of that. But in terms of medicine, entertainment, transportation, you name it, my neighbors are better off than he was. So it, this country works, and it's working now, but it leaves a, it's leaving a lot of people behind that are very good citizens, and we can do more for them, but we don't want to do it in terms of screwing up the golden goose. What do you think of Donald Trump, and what do you think of Chris Christie's uh, support of him? <laughs> well, 
my friend Charlie says, never underestimate the man who overestimates himself. <laughs> and that seems to apply in politics as well as in Wall Street and some other places. Uh, uh, I, uh, I've been amazed at what's happened but, uh, in, uh, in the Republican Party. Uh, I wasn't amazed at all. I, I, what Christie did was very predictable. I mean, I, 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 that, was, that did not surprise me at all. Uh, but Trump's popularity has surprised me, but it's, it's among Republicans, and, and uh, I, I happen to be a fan of Hillary's, and I think that she will be the winner in the fall.